Hello and welcome to Kanbanites. In our first tutorial we're going to take a look at the Kanban board. In the dashboard area you'll find all your workspaces and boards over here on the left hand side. We might describe the workspace as being a big folder which holds a collection of boards which in turn represent the work of various teams. Let's have a quick look in the mail room. Just three sections requested in progress and done, each represented by its own unique colour. Requested is blue, in progress orange, and done is green. The mailroom has a very basic workflow. Here we've introduced an extra lane. So now we have two priorities of workflow. Other teams have more work stages. We can customise their boards to suit their specific needs. To illustrate, let's drop in to the production area. OK, this is more like it. We still have the three sections as before. Blue for requested, yellow in progress, green is done. But we've broken down the requested area into two sub-columns. Documents received and ready to start. Likewise, we've broken down the in progress area and we've also used sub-columns to break the stages down further. Finally, we've also broken down the done section into two columns, delivered and abandoned. This way, we can track how much time we spend chasing unicorns. You've probably got the general idea of the Kanban board. The burning question now has to be, how is the work represented? The answer to this is simple, the Kanban card. Give it a title, a short description, assign the card's owner and set a size. Let's give it a distinguishing colour and mark its priority. Right click anywhere on the board and either left click again to place it in the cell you're hovering over or select one of the options below. Now we've got some cards on the board, let's click and drag the first card into ready to start. Our card is still in the blue section, so we know we're still in the requested area. Our work item makes it through the workflow and eventually makes it into the delivered column. It's so tempting to push as much work into progress as possible, but there are some very good reasons to keep your team focused on finishing stuff rather than multitasking. This is the reason why we impose work in progress limits on the most crucial stages of our workflow. I've set up a whip limit of two on the manufacturing column. This allows the system to react in a number of ways. The first symptom, the column header, turns orange to let you know that the column is effectively full. We can set a hard limit that will always deny attempts at overloading the column. Alternatively, we can allow the limit to be exceeded, but also make it mandatory to give a reason for the overload. You can allow whip limits to always be exceeded, but still track how often this occurs. Are we biting off more than we can chew? The general idea is pretty solid. Requested work is blue, stuff you're working on is orange, and done is green. Sections can be divided, and divided again using sub-columns, to represent separate stages within different working areas. Different types of work can be broken down with horizontal swim lanes, but you can also merge board areas together. Whip limits probably seem like a good idea. Just give them a go, at least while you're getting things set up. Set allow with a reason and you'll get honest feedback on why your bottlenecks are occurring. If you under or overestimate your capacity, then adjust it. It takes about 10 seconds. We mentioned cards, but we didn't go into any great depth. The next video covers this topic in excruciating detail. So for now, let's have a quick look at the initiative lane. We might describe this as the management view. Complex jobs are broken down into logical packets of work that, when collected together, might be called an initiative. I'll quickly set up our initiative and assign four different packets of work in the form of cards.
So we have four cards, each with a different size. I've configured the card sizes to be displayed on the front of the card. Card 1 is size 10, card 2 20, number 3 is estimated at 30, and card 4 is roughly 40. All the size values total to 100, but this is just to keep things simple. The card representing part 1 of the initiative moves into play, and the parent initiative automatically moves into the orange in progress section. Part 2 moves into progress and takes up an early lead heading into the assembly area. Part 2's tile is now coloured orange on the parent initiative. Part 1 goes into a sprint as parts 3 and 4 are still getting underway. And part 1 slides into Dunn by a short head. It was sized at 10, so the header of the initiative now shows as being 10% completed. Part 1's tile has also turned green. The other runners make their way across the finish line one by one. On arrival in the done section, each card reports the estimated percentage of completion on the parent initiative. When the last card hits done, the initiative automatically moves into completed. If you want to check out some predefined workspaces, just go to the Manage Workspace Templates under the big plus button. There are about 10 scenarios to choose from, and you can, of course, modify each of them in the edit workflow. I should also mention the vertical side ribbon. Here you'll find loads of gadgets, filters, configuration setups, as well as more heavy hitting uh, shortcuts like inviting users, importing cards, and stuff like that. Feel free to experiment with this stuff. It's here to make your life easier. Two features worth a special mention are card tokens. You can use these to either block or mark cards with a highlighting sticker. The other button I really like is the board backgrounds. Here you can choose from over a thousand searchable images. I like hamsters. Down the bottom here we have the slider. It's a zoom in, zoom out kind of a thing and it's really handy if you've got a developed board structure. One last thing. Three very useful resources. Under the question mark, you'll find the resource center with a direct link to the knowledge base. But for more complex inquiries, contact the support team. They really are second to none. If you need any advice on getting everything set up, get in touch with our success team. They're knowledgeable on the product generally, and if you have a question they can't answer, they can always walk across the room and talk to the product manager. Next video in the tutorial series will cover the Kanban card, and the series will continue to cover a wealth of different topics. Happy Kanbanizing!